Here we're going to try and draw an isometric of this object here. Now for the moment I'm going to draw this without a scale as this is just an introductory isometric drawing. But we will have to use the tricky bit of getting the curves right. So, first step in the process is to get our axes drawn. We'll pop that out of the way. So isometric axes are drawn on a um, your 30 degree set square. So we'll pop them down here. Again, these will be nice light construction lines. I'm going a little bit dark just to make sure you can see them clearly in the video. And there we have them. All right. And do a tiny readjustment to make sure we're nice and clear on the camera. So what we'll do now is just do a couple of crates for the main pieces. And this is like a kind of a box that we're sitting. So we might do an overall box. In this case, this one here is going to be the front television. which makes this the end. All right, our front elevation is going to be 35 by two, so 70 all the way across. We'll go pop that in there. Like I said, in a more advanced drawing, you will need to scale this, but we're deliberately not using this for the moment. 70, so it's gonna be going up the sides there. The total height of this object, it's 10 plus 30 plus 35, which can be 75. So there we are, 75. And we can just go across, we don't need to measure 75 anywhere else, because we can send this right across here. So that's like the outer front of it. Then we have across the end elevation is going to be 10 and 28, so 38. So we'll go get that guy drawn in now. So once we have this one, we can just draw these as construction lines and we can use a 30 degree set square to make the kind of box that it will go into. So imagine the whole object here came in a big giant cardboard box. That's what it would look like. Now, I'm just gonna rub this guy out for the moment for clarity. Again, if it was a construction line and you were drawing, you could leave it in. But this way we can see the big box it all fits into. It's a great way of simplifying the drawing and making sure you can see where it goes. So the next thing is, how do we break it up into smaller bits? Well, there's really three parts to this drawing. There's a base that sits on, there's this big vertical piece with a curve on it, and this little funny bit in the middle. So I'm gonna certainly make some construction lines for the big tall bit at the bottom of the base, and we'll worry about the diagonal piece later on. So we're going to come in 10 here and up 10 there. So there we are, up 10. Okay, and 10 coming off the back of it here. There we are. Okay, so we'll just kind of continue that across here. So now we can see the kind of shape that a lot of this is going to sit inside. So it's beginning to take some shape for us overall. Let's figure out where the center of the curve is. So that's going to be 35 down. So we measure 35 down here. We'll go across the front. Now when I draw this curve, I'm going to draw the front of it, which is going to be on this particular face. And then I'll worry about the back afterwards. It's much easier to do with it this way. And I'm choosing the front because I can see all the bits I can draw on the front. And there we go, 35. So that's the middle of our curve right here. All right, so our curve is going to sit on there, up there, and down there, and then we have the rest of our edges. Now, <clears throat> what we can begin to do is, I'm actually going to draw on some of these straight pieces now. So you can do this in whatever order you like, but this is just to help you see what we're looking at, because if you're a bit confused at this stage, this will make it a bit easier. So the bottom goes all the way across here. Okay. 
There's a bottom there. I won't be able to do all the pieces, but I'll be able to do enough of them to give us a good feel of what, what this object looks like. Now, I'm a little hesitant to draw these guys in at the moment because I just don't know if that sloping face is going to be a bit of a problem. So, you know, we might even just draw it in. So, if we come back to our little diagram here, it's 24 wide and it's evenly spaced. So, 12 off the center on each side. And it just comes from the center line here to the front. So, that's not too bad, really. What we'll do then is we'll come 12 off this line that I already have. So, I'll set that to 12 and 24. Okay, so that's the top edge of it. Now, because that's going to be an edge, it's going to be heavy, and I'll draw it in so I can keep track of things. There's a few ways to kind of figure out where it is along here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and across, down and across, and that's just as a nice, quick and easy way to get to it. So each of these guys goes down to the fold, and then across. And one of the keys to these drawings is if you can figure out how to move around the drawing using your 30 degrees, like this, so I'm going down and across, you can find where these points are quite quickly. And now I just join the edges there. There we go. And there we go. So at this point you can see that this actually was a heavy edge, that's fine, as was that. And you'll begin to see the 3D objects really take shape now. I can see that this edge here isn't blocked, so it's safe to draw it. And of course the same with the vertical bit here. We don't need to worry about hidden lines in these drawings. So now we've got all the bottom bits of this object drawn, it's just the top here. Now the way we're going to deal with this is we're going to do a little bit of a construction, looking straight at the circle, get a series of points, and then put them onto it. So I'm just going to rub out this to make myself some space. I'm going to do our circle construction right here. So 35 millimeters, we'll set our compass. Now, just a tiny tip, it's easier to do a construction there and put the compass down onto it than to try and hunt for the tiny, tiny compass spot uh, after you've drawn the circle. So there we go. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. Basically, I need to get a series of points. I know that this is a point in my curve, this is a point, and this is a point. And I'd probably really like two more in the middle here. Now, you can use your six... 60, 30, but sometimes I find it's a bit easier to just divide up the lines. So we have 35 here, so let's take a point there at 10, and another one at 20. All right, they don't need to be perfectly distributed. It's nice that they're close, but um, we'll still get a shape of the curve afterwards. So again, there we go, coming in 10. And that next jump was 15. Actually, I better write that on it, because I'll need this later on. And you can see I've erred a little bit towards going close to the edge here, because there's a lot of ha curve happening, even with a small distance. I could have probably left that 10, but we're not going to get too worried about it. Now, let's find out these points here. So we'll come in 10. There, come in 15. It's going to be a little bit annoying to see, but it's just there. Do the same from this edge. Come in 10, come in 15. There we go. Okay, now here's how we do this. So we'll actually turn to a colored one just to show you how this works. This vertical measurement here is the same as this one because it's symmetrical. All right. So from there to there is the same as there to there. That setter comes to this, this distance. 
and that is going to be how far we go up from these points. So we'll just give ourselves a construction to work off. And by marking that distance there and there, we know where our next points are. Just heavy them in a little bit more so you can see them. So this distance here is the green distance on my construction. Now, if you are doing this later on in an isometric scale, I would recommend you scale this drawing because then you can go straight from here to here. Okay. And for our other one, I have a lovely red pencil here. So always make sure your T-square is sitting happily. So of course the distance here is the distance here. And that's coming up from these points. So we'll set our compass to this distance. And there we go, quite close to the top actually. So again, just to help you see this, I'm gonna put it in red there. My very wobbly red pencil. Okay, so now I have points there and there. And at this stage, it's a case of just freehanding this in. So I can just, I would be going nice and light initially. Try to help yourself find the curve. And there we go. Once you see the curve, it's easier to go over it a bit heavier. Don't get yourself too worried. If you can't do this too easily at the moment, you will get it with practice. Now, I always find these ones quite a lot harder to do this, this side, but here we go. Something like that. Okay, so we're almost done. Now we're going to do the back of the curve. Now, that did seem like a bit of hard work, because it was. So we're not going to line ourselves up for all that again. There's a much easier way to do it. Because every point in the back is just that distance back, 10 mil. So we'll go to every single one of these guys, send a construction back from it. That one's easy, of course, because we already have the back. And there we go, and it kind of disappears around the side there. So I don't even need to remeasure this because I have it done already. It's handy if it's a scale. And we'll just mark off where the points are for the back. And just like that, you get the back curve. And once you have the back curve, you can kind of try and follow the front curve with your eye, because these should be parallel curves. And just disappears around the side there. Probably a little bit closer, actually. Okay, there is our isometric drawing.